Hey everyone, Ryan here with Romeo Music and you're watching Live Audio 101. Last time we talked about the basic setup of your system and how to get everything ready for your next event. So now it's time to run sound check. To learn the basics of sound check, I'm gonna bring you over to the board and we're gonna check just a single microphone. Now I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to learn your sound check, but just keep in mind, nothing replaces good old fashioned practice and developing your ear around the equipment you have. To demonstrate on a board, today we're going to use the Tascam Model 16. I like this board for a couple reasons. It's a pretty standard analog mixer, but it does have a couple features that stand out. One thing I especially like is the dedicated channel for Bluetooth or auxiliary input. I also really appreciate having a multi-band EQ for my master output. This allows me to really dial in the speakers and allow the sound system to truly serve the venue. For example, if the speakers sound particularly stuffy or boomy, I can dial out some of the low mids to liven up the sound. Alternatively, if it starts to get painful as you increase the volume, chances are you need to dial out some of the high frequencies from the mix. And the main thing that I love about this board is that it incorporates one of Tascam's industry-leading digital recorders. This multi-track recorder allows us to specifically record each and every channel individually as its own track, as well as the main right-left send. What makes it particularly cool as a learning device is the fact that I can then play back whatever I recorded and mix the recording on the fly. So before I get to sound checking my microphone, I want to make sure that my speakers and amplifiers are set up correctly. How I'm going to do this is by Bluetoothing or connecting my phone into the system and playing music that I'm familiar with. I'm going to bring up my main volume to Unity or Zero as well as the channel that my phone is connected to. At this point, I'll bring the attenuation knobs on my amplifiers up until I reach the loudest point that I expect to use for this gig. From there, I'll use my master EQ to adjust the quality of sound to make sure that my speakers are truly optimized to my space. The next thing I do just to help myself as I'm behind the desk is put a piece of masking tape on the bottom here and label each channel to correspond with what its input is. As my microphone today, I'm going to be using a Rode NT1 kit. Because this is a condenser microphone, I'm gonna start by turning on my phantom power. From there, I'm going to come over to the channel that's plugged into, make sure that I have it assigned to my main output, and then I'm gonna turn on my low cut. This is to make sure that any handling noise or stage noise does not come through the microphone via the stand. Now that the microphone is set up properly, I'm gonna turn on the pre-fader level button here. Now as I adjust the signal, you're gonna see just how strong the amplitude is in my main meters. At this point, I'm going to come over to my gain and start turning the gain up until my main meters reach about unity. Unity, of course, is the zero on my meters. It looks like this is a good spot for my gain, as I'm not peaking too high, but I have a good solid signal strength coming into the board. Now that my gain stage is set correctly, we're going to turn the pre-fader level off and bring the level of the board up to where I can start hearing my voice through the system. At this point, I'm gonna turn my lavalier microphone off so all you can hear is what's being recorded into the board. As I stated earlier, we're gonna skip over compression and we're gonna talk about that later in our Live Audio 102 class. The next step in setting our levels is making sure that the EQ is set correctly. Generally speaking, I try not to add any frequencies into our mix, instead taking away problem frequencies. The high frequency knob is going to give us a lot of control in the quality of diction from our voice. If I dial it in, you can hear a little bit more definition in my plosives, in my S's and T's. However, if you have someone, like me, with a strong S, you can dial this out but make sure you don't dial too much out as it can get kind of stuffy. I'm gonna leave this flat for now. The lows will adjust the fullness and boominess of my voice. As you can hear, when I dial this out, my voice gets a lot thinner. When I dial it in, you can hear a lot more rumble. Again, I'll leave this just flat for now. The mid is a little bit more complicated as there's both a frequency and a gain knob. This allows me to determine where in the frequency range I'm making adjustments. When in doubt, here's an easy way to determine where you need your sweepable mid. First, dial in just a little bit of gain on the mid. Then, we'll take our pitch wheel, put it all the way to the bottom, and bring it up until we get a nice natural sound coming into our recording. I'm gonna dial down the gain just a little bit, and that seems to give me a quality of sound that I want from my voice. Next in our signal path is our monitor sends. These allow me to have two different monitors that each have a separate mix from our main outputs. Let's say there are two people on the stage that want a different amount of my voice coming in through their monitor. 
I can give one person a lot of sound and one person a small amount of sound. Next, I can determine how much of my sound goes over to my effects processor. Come back for our Live Audio 102 when we dive into how to use the effects processor. And the last thing to do is determine how much of our signal goes to the left versus right speaker. Generally speaking, I try to keep everything centered unless I'm going for a specific effect in my sound system. And there you go. We now have a quality sound coming into our board, and it's now up to your ears to determine what the mix between the different inputs is. Now that you have a better understanding of your equipment, how to set it up, and how to sound check, you're ready to start as a live audio engineer. Stop by next week as we finish up our Live Audio 101 course talking about maintenance and general care of your equipment. If you have any other questions about sound check, live audio, or anything else music technology, feel free to contact us at 1-800-466-1773 or email us at info at romeomusic.net. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you can stay current with everything music technology. And thank you for visiting Romeo Music, your source for educational music and performing arts technology. <laughs>